near to you. That way you can enter into the new life washed and regenerated and renewed through and through and be finished with all this nonsense, this ruination of life that, that people are involved in. Now the Word of God becomes alive, like Hebrews 4.12 says, alive and powerful, it meaning, meaning it's life-giving, it's the bread of life, it's invigorating spiritual power springing forth. That's what that word means, life, the only life. The Spirit then can be quickened, like Romans 8.11, He quickens your mortal bodies. It's, then we serve Him in our mortal body, right? Our, this present age, as it says there in that Titus scripture I just read. He quicken your mortal body, the body of sin is done away with, Romans 6.6. 6. All things are made new in Christ. Mind, the purposes, the opinions, the inclinations, and the desires are transformed in that repentance. And God's not going to change your desires for you. You're going to change those when you decide to come to Him, seeking that mercy, removing that guile, those motives out of your heart. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature, and old things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. You've heard that verse, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Well, that, it's reality, folks. It's a newness of life, newness of thought, newness of opinions and purposes and desires. You're not going after the same old garbage in this world. It brings you no joy and no fulfillment to do that. People that ha have no change radically in their life and say that they're in Christ, I, I, I have to highly doubt that anything happened. Because this can never happen under the sin daily, filthy rags, desperately wicked, Romans wretch, professed converts. See, they remain as they are. It's like Re Revelation 22.11 says, he's filthy, he remains filthy still, he is unrighteous, remains unrighteous still. They're filthy, in strong delusion, they excuse themselves with all these notions. Well, if I could stop sinning, I wouldn't need Jesus, and I could save myself. I've heard it a thousand times from the pastors, from everybody. God's going to clean me up later and change my desires so I can sin less and less. But you never sin less and less. You keep doing the same thing again and again in vile, vile sins. Well, if I say I have no sin, I'm deceived and the truth is not in me, right? First John 1 John 1.8. Again, a total darkness and delusion. Childish, in fact. Juvenile, these excuses. Oh, it's not of works. And uh, Jesus did it all for me in my place. Right, yeah, this penal substitution. That, that's, that's a real nice doctrine. Blackening the precious Savior with sin in saying that he's going to transfer his righteousness to you when the Scripture says, he who does what is right is righteous. See, this is the great divide that those in the system refuse to cross and be purged of their sins in genuine repentance. Unless this happens through their full cooperation and a departure from iniquity, a departure from that guile, then their sins are going to remain and the failure therein will continue. Unfortunately, contrary to what they believe, sin hardens them further from the truth and from repentance, instead of hum humbling them as they're told, we're sinners saved by grace, so we're just humble sinners. No, it hardens you. It doesn't humble you. And when the conscience then is finally seared, you know what that word seared means in that First Timothy 4 passage? It's talking about cauterized. That's where our word cauterization comes from. When your conscience is cauterized with that hot iron, just like a piece of flesh would be from a wound would be covered up with that hot iron, then the conviction of the Holy Spirit's no longer effectual to bring about true repentance because the willingness to change is firmly decided in favor of sin and continuing in it. God cannot and He will not override this decision because He's given man free will and the ability to choose between the way of life and the way of death. And it's a choice that only man can make. God's not going to make it for you by some kind of magic. It's not going to happen because you spoke in tongues or got slayed in the Spirit at some phony rally. It's going to happen when you get purged of your sins in repentance. And you make that determined choice to come to Him. Unfortunately, most people in the system have made their choice already to continue in their world rebellion and 
excuse themselves with religious platitudes that they were trained to mimic by the pulpiteers, or the puppeteers, maybe we should call them. So, having, hanging you on a string, having their way with you, merchandising your souls. See, it's the only way that they know, and most of them, they wholly believe that they're going to be rewarded by God in the end because they believe in His loving kindness through Christ. I've seen very vile people that believe this. After all, they'll say, the Bible was written by various men over a long period of time. Who really knows which interpretation is right? It's been changed so many times. I mean, nobody could really know. I hear them say that all the time. Therefore, then, the general consensus among most church-going people that flock in there, if well, if I believe in the basic concept that Jesus came to die on a cross for my sins, then I'm forgiven, past, present, future, done deal, and I just go about my life here on earth as best I can. Well, some do better than others. Some don't participate in crimes. They get cast in jail or killed as a result of their crimes. But they still are vile and carnal in their being and think they have some kind, something to gain in this world. See, the, this gospel on this divide here, accept, trust, rest in Christ, no deeds involved whatsoever, that's preached worldwide as the gospel. But the purging of sins, the cleansing of all unrighteousness, that's just a mere echo from the past. It's just recently come back into being after hundreds and hundreds of years of it being gone. Thankfully to the internet and those of you out there that are standing up for the truth. See, the church crowd, they think purity of heart's impossible and repentance proven by deed, that's works. You can't do that. And tell pastors, well, I preach repentance and faith proven by deeds. You say, what? W what do you mean? You mean people have to stop sinning? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's about the end of the discussion. See, others look at this mess called Christianity, you know, those outside the, the spectrum of this, and they rightfully scoff at this blatant hypocrisy of these people professing Christ and sinning like the devil and claiming that they have favor with God, that somebody else doing the same thing doesn't have favor because they haven't done the repeat-after-me routine. It's just total foolishness, and rightly so. The Muslims look at it that way. It's total foolishness. What? the so-called Christians are standing up. They want to get their heads chopped off for that uh, nonsense that they believe in? Well, then so be it. If you give your body to be burned, but you have not love. Well, love, what? Purifies the heart by obedience to the truth. Faith working by love. We've been over it a hundred times. Plus, the problem with this is it's necessitated a system of doctrine that's originated over the last 500 years, you know, ingrained, I would say, over the last 500 years, but it originated in paganism way back in ancient Rome. What this does is it negates man free, man's free will ability in such a manner that most people under the influence of these teachings, they believe, capital believe, that they're born with this malady called sin dwelling inside them, kind of lurking in their flesh. So they have no control over this, even after supposed salvation. Just like the Westminster Confession says, it's right on, the Westminster Confession, with this lie. So instead of willful rebellion against God's commands, as a scripture, sin is transgression of God's commands, sin's a calamity in which man is not responsible for his actions. He has to be saved in his sins. Then be, he'll be reconciled to God. Then he can spend the rest of his life trying to do better but constantly failing, of course. See, according to this philosophy, and break it down again here, man is a sinner by nature and not by choice. They don't understand the Bible word nature. It's physis. It's, uh, I've seen it. I've been over, I don't know how many times, and they still post stuff on my site. It's P-H-Y-S-I-S. -S. It means growth and development. It's a scientific term in our language. Well, scientific term, meaning growth and development. So how do you become a sinner by nature, by growth and development of practiced habit of sinning? Uh, how many more times have you got to go over that? I, I, I don't know. So, but they treat that it's by nature, not by choice. So the excuse then, how can you repent of a nature? Right, well, how could I repent of my heart disease or my 
kidney malfunction. Well, I certainly couldn't. See, by necessity then, God's got to save these people in their 